The other day we were reading uh, some fun facts in here about sponges. 6,000 different species of sponges. And of course, since we're doing science, I was like, hey, what's a species? It was totally cross-curriculum. So I sat down with my daughter and asked her, what do you want in your math book? And so she wrote me out a nice little list. It, it said things like, I want it to be colorful. I want it to have lots of pictures and interesting stories. I want bold letters. I don't want it to be confusing. I want arts and crafts. And I also want you mom to sit next to me and help me, which that, I'm gonna talk about that in this video. So we have actually, in my household, I have two older siblings and we have done BJU, Saxon Math, Master Books, Teaching Textbooks, Singapore Math, Horizons, Right Start math and mammoth math and not to mention I am a homeschool evaluator and consultation so I have been through many many different math books and math curriculum I've seen a Becca I've seen so many more and I was thinking about what she said and I just did not know what to do because a lot of those don't don't really fit the bill so there was one curriculum that I was kind of curious about and that was because I, it's one of those that you like look at and you're like, ooh, I really wanna try this curriculum, but I already have this one over here, but I really wanna try this one. And so you're really happy when you find out the curriculum that you're not using isn't working out, so you can try that one and you're really excited. Okay, so that's kind of where I am right now. We have actually been using this curriculum for a little while and I know it's the end of the year, I get it. The thing is, is that she was struggling in math. It, it wasn't clicking for her and she knows that. So she has decided to work really, really hard over the summer so that she can be right on track when she starts the quote unquote school year. But then again, we're homeschooled. So what's, what's the school year? I don't know what it is more. We just go, we just go, you know. Anyway, the curriculum that I am talking about is this Exploring Creation with Mathematics, and it's from Apologia. So if you haven't been to my channel before, you may not know that I love science and I love teaching science, and I have used all the curriculum from Apologia, all the middle school and elementary school curriculum, because I teach at home school co-op, and I've been doing that for over 10 years, as well as my kids. Math and science go together, and if their science is good, I'm expecting their math to be good. I really am, that's what I expect. And I actually, looking through this curriculum and starting it, I have seen that and I've been actually very pleased. So I'm gonna talk about some things that I'm noticing about this curriculum from a homeschool mom and teacher perspective that I thought was really interesting that might persuade you to buy it. I don't know, you may absolutely hate what I have to say. But then you know, and you know if you wanna use it. So we're gonna look at exploring creation with mathematics. Okay, so yes, I am using level four, which is fourth grade. But I, something that I saw that was super duper duper cool about this curriculum, I noticed that when we were going through this book, they have a lot of little like shout outs and fun little facts about sea creatures. And I'm like, well, this book is sea creature themed. And then I went, wait a second, Apologia, their science curriculum for fourth grade. By the way, they're not like grade based for science, but they could be. And if they were, it would be fourth grade. And they do have a new one, I just have the old edition. Uh, their zoology two book is the swimming creatures. So I could do science with swimming creatures and math with swimming creatures. And I just um, got super excited about that and looked online to see if this was like on purpose. Well, duh, totally on purpose. Their first grade is like math and astronomy and their second grade math is a botany, okay, themed. Then the next one's gonna be the insects and the butterflies and well, butterflies or insects. The point is, that's really cool. Uh, the other day we were reading uh, some fun facts in here about sponges. 6,000 different species of sponges. And of course, since we're doing science, I was like, hey, what's a species? It was totally cross-curriculum. And by the way, kids learn really well when you do that. Just thought I'd point that out. Another thing that I looked in and saw in this book is they actually had some experiments, some measuring experiments in here which I thought, here, I'm gonna show you. There's one, which I thought that was pretty cool. They're kind of sprinkled throughout. So let me let me talk about what you get. So first of all, you do wanna get a teacher guide and answer key. You do. Oh, not only because it has answers, because 
as they get older you need answers for mathematics. They also have the little worksheets back here that they're going to use. They're going to cut out, paste, manipulate. Have you ever manipulated a piece of paper? <laughs> buy me a car. Just joking. They also have chapter test in the back. I don't think a piece of paper could buy me a car though. But you get the point. Like you can cut it out and cut and paste and okay that was such a bad joke. I'm so sorry. Moving on. So anyway you want to get the teacher guide. Okay. Very important. You can see each of these notebooking pages or worksheet pages are super duper colorful. There's even a pinwheel in here. Did you see that? I noticed that the layout for the Apology of Science book, so similar to these guys right here, mathematics. Talking about layout, it is going to have in your teacher guide at the beginning of each unit, they're going to show you all the different supplies that you're going to need for that unit. They do the same thing with Apology of Science and from past experience, what I've learned is that at the beginning of each unit, you look at all the supplies, see if you need to order anything through Amazon and do that then because we all know Amazon takes like a day or two to come in. So, you know, like if you need um, a ruler because my kids always seem to break rulers, you order it from Amazon and hope they don't break that one before you have to use it. The way this book is actually set up, first of all, it's spiral bound. I love that because it's so easy to flip. You could flip backwards, forwards. Um, my daughter, when we did it, we needed to put tabs on a reference page because she needs to reference this, right? So we may be on a completely different page and I'm like, she's like, oh, I don't remember where the hundredths place is. We'll go back to your tabby in the chart. Look how easy it is to go, oh, I can turn the pages so easily in this big spiral notebook, okay? And if you don't like a page, you can rip it out. Very easy, I'm not gonna rip it out for you. Not every, so it's divided in chapters. The chapters are divided up into lessons. Not every lesson is going to include one of these worksheets. So keep that in mind. This math is taught at a mastery level. Yes, you are going to go back and refine some of the skills here and there. But for example, you know, level four, fourth grade, they wanna really hone in and make sure that multiplication is done. They really wanna get those fractions taken care of, place values, decimals, basic measurement. And I did see some angles in there. Uh, division, you start doing vertical division. That's, oh, quadrilaterals, geometry, some basic beginning geometry stuff. That's what you're gonna find in here and they're really gonna master that as well as the multiplication facts as well. So let me show you what, and let me explain to you what each of these book icons are because that's basically what's throughout the entire book. So the first one is called the skills practice. And there's not many of these, but basically there are little extra activities that you're going to be, and they're not extra, you need to do them. You're going to be doing it throughout that particular unit. So in this case, so let's look at unit one. At the very beginning of unit one, they're gonna do a little explanation, and at the very bottom it says, skills practice for unit one, adding and subtracting three digits numbers, then see answer key, page 16 for more detail, which is in here. So they actually have it written out in detail what you're gonna do for unit one. So there's one, two, three, four different skills, practices that you can do. Some include note card facts, practice with addiction, addition worksheets on the book extras website, play make the greatest sum with Uno cards or take it further. They're given an extra challenge, a problem, add the sum. They have to work backwards to find the missing parts. So you can kind of see an example right there. So the idea is throughout the unit, you're gonna do some of these skills practices and they're listed in detail in the teacher guide. All right, so the next little icon that we see, that is an actual little octopus guy. And that means you're about to do an activity, an actual activity. And that's either gonna be one of the worksheets or it's gonna be See, here it is. Here's a little activity that you can do that usually happens, by the way, at the beginning of the lesson. Not all the lessons, but if it's going to happen, it's usually at the beginning. That's what I've seen so far. And that's usually those little worksheets that are in there. 
or like I said, there was one that was like a science experiment. So that's the octopus guy. The killer whale is going to introduce you to new, vo new vocabulary words. And then this little turtle, sea turtle, is going to be the actual practice these pages. Okay, introduction to problem solving techniques that this book is going to include because one of her goals, the author of this book, was to get, to ki get the kids to start thinking and solving problems. So they're sprinkled out throughout and the first one is actually on lesson eight and this is one where they're actually going to introduce you to problem solving. And so this entire lesson is going to be focused on problem solving and it's uh, it looks a lot different than the other lessons but they still have the little turtle at the end where you have to do the actual problems. So I did mention at the beginning of the video that I have tried lots of different curriculum with my different kids. Some worked really, really well, others not so much. But one thing I want to add is it's not always necessarily the curriculum because each and every child learns different. Now this may not be great for other kids. Honestly, after looking through this book, I would not I would not have used this with use this with her brothers. Her brothers are very analytical. They want the more advanced, boring books. They're not into the colorful pictures because to them that's just a distraction. For her, it helps with her creativity side. So, like I said, it really depends on the kid. Teaching textbooks, for example, was absolutely great for one of my kids. I mean, when we did testing with him, he was scoring three or four grade levels above the grade level that he was at. Yet for her, having teaching textbooks was not working. I also know for her, she likes to write things down and teaching textbooks didn't do that. You had to use like a scratch pad. You could write it down an extra sheet of paper, but that temptation to use a scratch pad is pretty strong <laughs> because I mean, come on, it's fun, okay? So, and, and and I'm not saying there's nothing there's nothing wrong with these other curriculums that didn't work for us, but this one I think is actually going to be a win. This is my prediction. I really think this curriculum is going to be a win-win for her. I will let you know after this, after we're done using this curriculum, how it went. But I am also going to put all the information down in the description box below if you are interested in it. Um, check it out. I know I also mentioned Right Start. I don't know um, if you guys want to know the details behind Right Start Math, but that one is a very, very hands-on curriculum. And I do see a lot of similarities between what I'm seeing in Exploring Creation and what I saw in Right Start Math. There is the difference of color. There is the difference of those little science tidbits that are coming through on some of those pages. I also felt like Right Start Math was more heavy on the games, whereas looking at Apologia, it seems to be more heavy on the activity page and the practice page and games are kind of sprinkled in. We almost, I almost, she almost, we, we just almost killed each other with Right Start Math. And um, I had to literally sit with her for an hour a day. She did fight me a bit with that one. However, she did say she does want my help with math and wants me to work with her. But anyway, if you have any questions about Apologia is Born Creation, let me know in the description box below. And thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.